Welcome back to the channel everybody. This is firewood week. Hopefully not firewood two weeks. We'll see how long it takes us to get it all done. So I told everyone that I would just kind of do an episode and keep everybody apprised on the progress. And some people were asking about firewood system. I'll just walk you through it real quick. Um, I guess to start with, we'll talk about how we cut the logs. Most of these are around eight feet long and our stoves, which are just a couple like radiant heat parlor stoves, prefer firewood chunks that are 16 inches long. So we just take an old stick and we put marks on it every 16 inches. This is our guide stick. And you can see some of these have been hit quite often with the bar. It happens, you just get a new stick. But when we cut the trees into logs, we just set that down next to the log basically. So pretend this is the ground right here. Boom, this is the trunk that we're cutting on. We'll just make a deep cut to indicate one end and then just do a slot, a slot, a slot all the way down till we get to the other end. Boom, you've got the logs pre-marked and of rather uniform length. So you look in this pile, everything you find in here is gonna have the, the little slit marks on it. Um, see like this one all the way up, this one all the way down. So some are longer than eight. You know, if we had a log that just, it needed just one or two extra ones on it like this, and we didn't want to chop off a smaller piece, we'll just make an extra mark and leave it a little bit long. Others are a little bit shorter. I mean, it's not an exact science, but like here, that one's a little bit shorter. But for the most part, they get you pre-marked and it helps us to stack well when we've got, you know, uniform length pieces of firewood to work with and we just throw them on pallets. So here's one. We just knocked this together from some of the practice lumber that uh, Senior has been making, tuning in his new band mill. This is just some popple. And um, yeah, four foot wide pallets. I think these are eight feet long. We made a series of these and having 16 inch long chunks of firewood means that you can get one, two, three chunks stacked across a four foot wide pallet and it fills it up perfectly. So. That's pretty much all you need to know about the setup. Let's get off that mic. Gloves on. About the setup so far. Um, I'm probably going to spend the rest of today just blocking these logs up in this pile right here. We're going to work on this pile first. And once we get them all blocked up, we'll transition into splitting and stacking. And that's probably going to be at least for tomorrow. This is uh, about midday on Sunday. Had some obligations this morning. We got out of the way. We are starting with firewood from this point out. We're gonna go till it's all done. Time to get busy. Okay, we're just about dark out here. I'm not sure how this is gonna show up on the GoPro, but um, so we got probably two thirds of the pile blocked up. This one I decided, that's one that Senior and I hauled with the Super M yesterday and that's right where that big oak had splintered. It had laid on the ground, it's so dirty. I'm gonna leave him till last because after I cut those pieces, the chain is gonna need to be sharpened again. So we've got a little bit left right here. Uh, we can gauge our progress. Here's where we started with the pile right here. So we opened up one set of bunks and just about a full second set down there. Decent pile of blocks built up to this point. So yeah, I wanted to finish this whole pile today, get it all blocked. We didn't make it too late of a start. That's okay. We'll pick back up with it tomorrow and uh, I'll bring you all back then after I get the rest of these logs into block form. Welcome back everybody. You might be able to hear Senior in the background. He's on leaf pickup duty yet. Considering we got our first snow the other day about a month earlier than we were expecting, it's kind of uh, renewed the drive to get all these uh, fall related tasks done. So. I, this morning, yeah, there he is. He's photobombing me again in the background. Just this morning, I got out here, finished blocking the rest of the logs. So we've got a pretty decent pile ready to process. I have staged the splitter, changed oil in that, full of gas, ready to go. Um, there's been several questions in the past, what I use. 
I've had this for about five years. Uh, it's just what the local tractor supply store had. A Swisher brand, 28 tons. I've had good luck with it. I've just changed oil and kept throwing gas in it and it's done everything I've ever needed it to do. The only thing I did was um, I hung this piece of steel off of the table because there's so much flop in it, it would rattle like crazy when you're running this. So we got bungees kind of holding in position. Twisted clevis with an old piece of scrap steel just to give us some counterweight. It quiets it down a bit. Um, all right, so the reason I staged this pallet here yesterday was to give you guys a visual of what the process is. So we used to have the log pile right here. We blocked it and threw it off to the side as we went. Now we're gonna run the splitter down this side, pull from over here, split the stuff, and basically just start making a continuous pile of split wood right off to the side of the pallet right here. So as we take the logs and split them, basically we're gonna have a nice windrow of split wood where we can just keep throwing pallets down where the log pile or the blocks are now and just keep working all the way down. It's, uh, it's just about doing whatever you can to speed the process along somewhat. I haven't found a way to process firewood without a huge automated machine yet that doesn't require you having to handle each piece like five times before it finally makes its way into the pile. It's just one of those things. So I'll get a bit split here and then maybe uh, it'll become more apparent what the overall goal is for the next, oh, I don't think I'm gonna get this all split today. It might be today and tomorrow before I get this stuff split. We'll see how long it takes. Get you all off the tripod there. So I had seen you running the lever for me. That really helps out quite a bit when I don't have to continually be babysitting that ram. So we've got a start on the splitting. I don't know, third of the pile maybe. Bring you back tomorrow when it's a little bit more daylight.
I'll give props to Ma. She's the best trigger man in the business when it comes to running that lever. <laughs> no mercy, right? <laughs> Okay, everybody, not much footage from day three, but we've finished with the splitting phase. So that means beginning tomorrow, we start the stacking phase, which is always kind of a nice phase to be in because at least then you know every piece you put on the pallets, you don't have to touch again for probably one to two years. So that's always pretty nice. Um, okay, so just to recount, this is technically the third day that I've been doing it, but... I haven't been at it three full days. You consider I didn't get a start until midday, early afternoon on Sunday. So we had half of Sunday to half of Monday was blocking the logs. And then from mid-Monday and now the end of Tuesday, I'm saying that's a day and a half to split everything. Splitting is the most tedious step for the way we do it. We'll get into that a little bit more tomorrow when we're in the stacking phase and I can show you how and why I split things the way I do and the system that works for us. So really we're just two and a half days at this point. It'll take till midday tomorrow, which is Wednesday, to technically be at the, the three full day mark time-wise. So, all right, that's all I have for you today. The sun is, well, we'll probably, it'll go down in about a half hour. Um, I'm gonna start uh, staging for stacking tomorrow and uh, bring you back then. All right, everybody. We're midday on Wednesday, so this is, like I said, the three-day mark pretty much gets you out of that glare of, you know, well, since we first started on that log pile, and we've got this much of it stacked. I got out here early this morning and got going on it, and we're doing it, this is about six feet high, all right? It's about eyeball height on me from the ground, and like I said before, we are four feet wide. We do a 16, 16, and 16, boom, that gets us there. So, and um, I want to talk a little bit today now about why we process the wood into the sizes that we do. And of course we have, I mentioned, just those smaller radiant heat stoves. And we found that this size, this dimension of firewood is the most efficient for our application. Um, we don't have like a gigantic outdoor wood boiler or anything. There are pluses and minuses to those. Uh, one giant plus with a boiler is you get to leave the fire and the mess outside. You don't have to bring that in the house. Um, it just doesn't suit our application. And the way the smaller um, parlor stove is located on the split level house, we can heat that entire structure just off of that stove if we have to. So um, firewood is kind of our primary heat source in the house for the winter time with a, uh, uh, like a propane, like a gas backup. And of course the uh, furnace in the new shop is a uh, gas furnace. We don't do any kind of uh, fire in there. But then we have the other stove in the old shop. Senior works out there quite a lot. We fire that with wood as well. So between the two different locations, we don't really have a setup where an outdoor boiler would really work for us. So yeah, we chop it up fairly small, but I wanted to show you all Something I've been doing the last few years. So whenever I get like some good straight grained popple or oak, I'll cut like shakes out of them like that. I'll split a bunch, you know, inch and a half to two inches thick, full width if they're about that size. We had one right there. Here's like a similar one out of oak. You can see them throughout. Um, I actually cut those out somewhat regularly. Anything that's kind of nice and, and flat to stack. And I'll show you the reason why. So you go down here, and of course, like I said, we throw it all on pallets so it's up off of the ground. You go down here, the reason I like those flat shake style pieces is for building the ends like this. You can crisscross them in a grid. And ever since I've started doing that for the ends, I've never had a pile kick out or move at all. And another thing I will do is you can see how we start off kind of level, but then I start to taper them forward a little bit. That just kind of helps to crowd the rest of the pile in so it further resists actually tipping out the back. So this is probably three quarters of what I split yesterday. Well, when we started stacking this morning, the pile was at this little double tree right here. So just before lunch, we've made that much progress on it. So I'm going to get busy 
finishing off the rest of this and then we'll see how much further we get after that. Okay, we're near the end of Wednesday. Everything we had split is cleaned up and in the pile. And we didn't have enough to quite finish off this end, but I wanted to get out to where I started building up the other end abutment, so you need to kind of creep up against that so it doesn't get too tippy in. So we've got a gap in the middle we've got to fill. That's no problem. I forked over another couple loads of logs from our other pile, the bigger pile way over there that are also going to be processed this year. I believe everything we have here is going to be well enough to finish this off. So total pile length right here. We've got four pallets down on the ground. Each one is eight feet long. That gives us 32 feet total in length. And you know, like I said earlier, the top of the pile is probably six-ish feet tall minus, you know, the pallet uh, thickness beneath that. We're five and a half, maybe five and two, three inches. I'd say total of wood, four feet wide, 32 long by the time we're done. I don't know how much that is cord-wise, but we usually arrange it so that one long pile like this is just about one year's worth of firewood for the two stoves that we run. So sometimes we run, we run over a little bit. We had, well, this pile we had to start on last year because we burned the one whole one that was full length and then almost had to go into May because it stayed cold in the spring. So yeah, we'll burn the rest of this one this winter. And I bet probably if we have another long cold spring, half of this one, but that's all right. This one's two years old by this point. That's about perfect seasoning for the wood we want to burn. All this stuff is going to sit in the pile at least one year, possibly two. So that gets you all caught up on where we are as of right now. So bring you back tomorrow after we buzz all this stuff up, hopefully finish off the stack. All right, everybody, bring you back one last time. Thursday evening, we're just about out of sun. This morning, I got out here and cut and split and stacked the rest of what we needed to finish off this pile. So I estimate that the mass that's in this pile, the volume, is about what we're gonna use in one winter, average winter. So anything I make this year beyond this, just as bonus puts us to the good so it can be considered a gain i went through and um measured it overall i'd say we average five feet high from top of pallet to top of pile we're four feet wide 32 feet long and that is the cut split stacked i think we're just north of five cord right here if anybody's a little bit smarter than me and can work numbers go ahead feel free to figure it out um just wanted to show you we just cover these with a tarp, we do 12 foot wide by 20 foot long tarps and we just slit it the long way right down the middle so they each end up being six foot wide, 20 feet long. We've got enough hangover on each end where we can sneak an old junky pallet that's not good for piling anything on anymore underneath, weigh it down on each end. That gives your watershed a place to go off the end of each end of the pile and we'll weight the top down with. I've got an assortment of slabs up here. Most times we just use some ragged cutoffs like that. The only thing I have left to do, get a little bit more weight down here on this, and then we're gonna call that good. So we've still got enough on it that um, it's not gonna go anywhere. Here's our old pallet with the, some old basswood chunks holding that down on this end here. And all right, what we're gonna do is finish off that other log pile that's way over there down the middle right here. We're just gonna fill this gap now. That's where we started cutting originally, pile to that side. We're just gonna cut. And as, well, we're not gonna do as big of batches now because we're good until, okay, this is the end of Thursday. We're supposed to be good until the end of Sunday before the weather really takes a turn for the worst. So this weekend might be the last really decent warm weekend we might have for the whole year. So I'm back to the old um, standby procedure of just bring a few fork loads of logs over, block them up, split them, stack them, and keep it cleaned up and palletized as I go. That way, if this point or from this point on, the weather really turns bad on us, I have the option of quitting at any time. I don't have a big mess strung out that I'm gonna have to be out here trying to clean up. So that's pretty much the rundown on the firewood process. Um, oh, only other thing I wanna add, these tarps will last about two years out here and then we have to replace them. Our goal is to get it burned within two years. Sometimes they sit out here for three, but either way, we don't burn green wood. We always make sure it seasons 
minimum one year. We like it two years plus. So, all right, I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three plus solid days. I'm gonna keep banging on another pile. We're gonna see how much we get done. I'm not gonna bore you all with any more of the details. You know what I'm gonna be up to. So I'm gonna get busy. Last little bit of sun, just ready to disappear. Thanks for watching everybody.